Mr. Game! Mr. Game! Mr. Game! What's your name? I'm a Kamen Rider. What's up, everybody? It's the Quarter Guy, and uh, first things first, announcement time. Anime Milwaukee is coming up again this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Let's see, that's the uh, 15th, 16th, and 17th. It's going to be held at the Wisconsin Center in downtown Milwaukee on the nearby Hyatt Regency. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff there. Guest panels, fan panels, voice actors this year... Voice actor guests this year include Josh Grell, Adam Crosdell, David Vincent, Jerry Jewell, Lauren Landa, J. Michael Tatum, Mika Sol Solosod, I, 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 I mangled his name there, I know that, Ian Sinclair, DC Douglas, and Joel McDonald. So, I'm going to be checking stuff out there, getting some good, good pictures of great cosplay, checking out what kind of stuff they have at the uh, vendor booths, and uh, checking out what games they got there. And if you're in the Wisconsin, if you're in the Milwaukee area during that weekend, be sure to check it out. You might even see me there. So, what I want to bring up today is I'm thinking of making a, a change or two to my Patreon. So, thing is, I started my Patreon a few years ago while I was still looking for steady work in order to supplement my YouTube ad revenue to. Uh, improve my equipment and research materials to improve my channel. And I've, I've had, uh, like, let's see, six tiers of, I mean, seven tiers of patrons, from as little as one dollar to as high as thirty dollars. Let me just go, go through what I've got right now. The, the basic patron level is at one dollar, which is credit in, credit in my videos. Five dollars is the bronze patron tier, which is currently access to a preview of my next major video each month. Ten dollars is the silver patron tier, which allows which allows you to get in a special Skype group, which holds Q&A sessions every other week. Fifteen dollars or more is the gold patron tier, which is the uh, behind the scenes for each major video. Now, the one I'm looking to change is the uh, $20 tier, which is the Platinum Patron tier, which is a request for a reaction video. Now, reaction videos are becoming increasingly unpopular for, like, for normal videos and stuff. So that's why I really want to change it. It's like... I'm thinking of, like, changing that to a special patron pick for my countdowns, which would go in the honorable mentions between number two and number one. So, let me know what you think of that, if you have any other ideas, so... $25 will still remain the uh, one-shot Let's Play tier, which is the pure Platinum Patron tier, which is on the Patreon, Patreon page. And I'm still going to keep the game, the special Game Night tier at the highest level, which is the $30, 101% Wonderful Patron tier. So, that's currently my plan, is to change the... is to phase out the QG Reacts thing and save that for like a very special occasions like Nintendo Directs or possibly the upcoming Mega Man Battle Royale Death Battle. I don't watch Death Battle as much as I used to anymore. It also, it's also, it's also kind of sad that Screw Attack is now just Death Battle. I mean, it was kind of inevitable with everyone leaving that Death Battle would eventually be the only thing left of the, of what used to be Screw Attack. That's part of the reason I changed my hat. That and uh, Pac-Man's more appropriate to my theme. So, anyway, quick update. I am currently working on the script for my uh, history of Pac-Man. It's like Pac-Man, the, the arcade retrospective of Pac-Man. It's kind of like a retrospective and uh, sort of like brief history of it and what made it work as a works so well as a game, so that is going to be my goal to get it out by the end of the month, so look forward to that. I hope you enjoy it when it comes out, and I hope you'll, I hope it'll encourage me to make more videos like that. So, question of the week, what would you recommend for a $20 Patreon reward? As always, leave your answers in the comments, favorite comments will be featured in the next episode, 
Here are our last episode's winners. And with that, time for the fourth wall mailbag. As always, look for the community post to send me your questions, and I'll answer my favorites in the next episode. Only a few this week. First one comes from Drawboy66, who asks, Since you did a Shadow Challenge for Persona 5, will you do an Awakening Challenge as well? Well, I'm not really planning on it. And the reason for that is, I've kind of sat on it for so long that no one's doing it anymore, and there's really not much of a point anymore. I mean, if you wait on something too long, eventually it's going to go out of style. In fact, funny story about that, uh, I was working on, working on to see if I could make a parody of Despacito using only the names of Fire Emblem characters. I still have the script for that, but uh, Despacito is no longer really a meme right now, so it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be worth it at that point. Unless anyone actually wants to see it, in which case, let me know. But uh, yeah, don't expect an Awakening Challenge from me unless, again, enough people really ask for it. I might just do it if enough people ask for it. Let me know. Next question comes from Solid Protagonist, who asks, If a Darkstalker were to make it into Smash, who would you want in? Personally, I would either like to see Dimitri, who's been done dirty for so long, or Genodoma, who deserves better than what he got in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I mean, Jenna's such a Cool, has such cool character design being like a, a Shinigami-like demon and having all these unique and disturbing attacks. And then you got Dimitri, who's a real, a real fighting game vampire, and I like his design, I like his uh, his moves, and uh, the Midnight Blesses of Final Smash would be pretty humorous, not gonna lie. Though it would probably be really intensive on the on the model animators. And I, I can also see Dimitri being voiced by Patrick Seitz. He does quite a few vampires. Though, if though, let's be honest. If a Darkstalker's character did get in, Capcom would probably choose Morrigan for that. I mean, Morrigan's become the de facto face of Darkstalkers over the years. I mean. Morgan's usually the one who gets into every Darkstalkers crossover. So, yeah. Last question this week comes from King Riolo the Immortal, who asks, How would you feel if Capcom made another beautiful Joe game? I would be psyched. I mean, we've been waiting for that third threat for long enough.